Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show with your host, Phil Tarrant. Okay, everyone. How are you going? Uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining us today as we navigate this crazy world of property investment and what 2020 will bring. Who knows? It's a little bit more stable this year than what it was uh, the year prior, considering sort of federal elections and a lot of uncertainty in that regards. Uh, I'm pretty pumped about 2020. I think there's going to be some great opportunities in the market and the market being very broad. Uh, there's markets all over the joint. So everyone's talking quite colloquially about what that means right now, reading the papers and and pulling out data and information wherever they read it, most of it around auctions clearance rates. So you're going to see them start sparking in the gear pretty soon over all the different capitals. So uh, keep connected, keep engaged, but irrespective of what the market is doing, you've got to understand what you're doing and planning out what 2020 looks for you, whether you're buying, whether you're holding, whether you're downsizing, whether you're consolidating, everyone's going to be at a different stage of their portfolio. And uh, the best in property investors I know are those that are really connected with that. One of them is Duncan Yells. He's been on the show before in August of 2019. I've asked him back into the show just so we can have a chat about his strategy for 2020, how he's shaping his uh, investing in property over this coming period. If you remember back to August, go and check it out. Just search Duncan Yelds on smartproperinvestment.com. Do you go and track it out? About six or so months ago, we had a chat around. Uh, he went from five to 25 properties in 18 months. So on the accelerator program, we're going to see whether or not he's still on that same program, whether he's dialing it down or even dialing it up, and just get his take on the property market in general. What he's up to, Duncan? How you going, mate? You well? Great, thanks very much. Awesome intro, mate. Yeah, look, very well indeed. Really, actually, had a nice break over over Christmas and New Year. Unfortunately, coming back to Sydney, uh, some of the worst smoke and worst pollution in the world at the moment, sort of thing, in comparison to where I've been. But look, still, I think it's a beautiful city to come home to, and um, getting right back into it. I, I've already seen half a dozen clients in the in the last week. It's amazing how many people are actually chanting at the bit to get back on the wagon and uh, not yeah. waste any time in 2020. I think there's a good vibe out there. And that's it, right? You either get to choose to do you attack the day or do you let the day attack you, right? So, yeah. uh, you know, it's that whole sort of mindset of positivity and working out how you choose to shape the way in which you, you know, in this context, navigate property and investing in property and, and your attitude towards that. And attitude is mm. the key thing, I think. And that's what I see amongst investors, the successful ones, is that irrespective of what's going on, they're always positive about property. They're just changing what they might be doing. And imagine that's part of your story. So, so just to recap, Duncan, our chat in August of last year, which I really enjoyed, you're on that accelerator program. That was mm. five to 25 odd properties in 18 months. Like yep. what was happening to move that quick? Oh, um, you just team. Uh, look, you know what? Going back to that, it was a whirlwind. Look, I think we mentioned then, yeah, very different market conditions, very different financing conditions and rules yeah. around lending at that point in time. What was happening though, I think it was we, we didn't understand what we had in wealth is sitting there and it was really untapped and really unleveraged and getting that education and support of a, of a really good team around us was the difference. I think that's something that's come through over and over again and even just these literally a client on Friday last week where I was uh, sitting down with them and they're into their late 50s, early 60s and it comes down to what are you wanting to achieve? Like, why are you buying a property in the first place? Mm. These guys actually, I almost talked them out of buying another property. It was their strategy and what they actually had in place was fantastic already. They're right at the other end of the spectrum of they're slowing down and it's all about lifestyle for them now. It still comes down to why are you buying the property? And the question that was asked to me over and over again when we went from 525, what is this property going to do for you? Why are you buying it? What's the reason for this asset being put into your portfolio? And I think so many people, especially in Australia, get caught up in this whole barbecue story. Everyone's buying property, so I should buy property too. And overall, does property work well? Of course it does. Can it work really, really, really well for investors if they really know why they're buying that piece of property and understand the, the nuances of whether it's there for capital growth or to flip or to reno or to whatever it is, it's that whole, why are you actually buying a piece of property? And that was just pounded into us in that 5 to 25, why are you buying it? And every property had a purpose. And mm. yeah, 18 months after we went from 5 to 25, we were back down to 10 because some were bought for a purpose of flipping, full stop, just taking some equity out of them and doing the deal. So it's really understanding that why are you buying? That was what was happening. So what's the portfolio look like now? How many properties in the portfolio? Okay. So we're sitting on five at the moment and looking at actually so you've downsizing. Got five, 25, back five. to five. Oh, no, we've gone up and down since yeah. then okay. many, many a time. When I think we'd we'll love to have a talk about the States at some point in time. I think mm. that's another market that's interesting. We went over to the States and we personally did 50 deals over in the States mm. uh, across Texas and New York and 
had some great learnings out of that as well. I bet you um, <laughs> that was right around the GSC time. That's a whole mm. other episode. So, no, we're sitting on the five at the moment okay. and uh, look at actually you're talking about downsizing for what are you doing? And look, I'm at that stage now where I've got a really great five-bedroom home with a granny flat on a quarter acre up at Hornsby mm. and looking at what am I going to do with that? I don't need that anymore. My, my son's about to leave school and you don't need the big property anymore. So let's downsize. Let's, let's downsize look at that. Now. So the actual investment portfolio, let's, if you don't mind, quickly run through sure. what's in there. So tell us about those five properties. Okay, so Hornsby, one. Yep. Okay, that's a principal place of residence. Uh, principal, yep, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Then we've got another um, two townhouses up in Queensland, both okay. three bedders. Whereabouts are they? That's Richlands. Yep. And on the um, north side of town, Everton Hills on the other side. Okay. And we've got a townhouse down in uh, Borkham Hills in Sydney. Okay. Gee, that's gone nuts. I was drove oh, out through there the other day, Borkham Hills. That, on the corner of Windsor Road and Seven Hills Road, that huge, huge development. That's a dill dam building yeah. a huge development there. Yeah, that's going to change. a thousand properties in there. Look, I think that's going to change the dynamics, and we're actually literally just across the road from that railway parade. So we've had that since 93, 94. Oh, okay. You've so it's, had some, it's done what it's meant to do, I, done some yeah. really good rental. But I think it's, as a star performer right now, I think that's the one that is actually going to give some really good rental turn and also some growth because you've got the light rail, you've got so much infrastructure happening around that. Yeah, um, it's, it's a good spot. So that's the fourth property, is it? The yeah, that's right. The Mills. And what's, what's the fifth that's one? That's right. Then we've got a uh, house and land down in uh, Geelong in Victoria. Okay, cool. Yeah, that Borkham Hills stuff. James, our producer, can you just look up Borkham Hills for me? Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, I've been, I remember when Borkham Hills was semi-rural, when the Bull and Bush was like a country pub, right? Well, now, that's, that's a, just across the road from the Bull and yeah, Bush. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That corner there, the Dildam corner. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's completely changed right now. Oh. But when you think of what's happened is that you've got the – when you bought in the early 90s, right, it was pretty, Two, pretty sleepy, right, sort of two, area. 239, I think, was the price, if I remember yeah. that correctly. Okay, they're probably about right. But that's when you had no M2, no M7, no. Um, which is right you – know, Borkham Hills is right now smack bang on it. Now you've got the light rail going through. It's a hot little area. And, and during that last property spike that we had sort of five, six years ago, Borkham Hills went through the roof. Went you know? nuts. Yeah, it was a really good time. And uh, you talk about the M2 going mm. in. That was – we'd bought before that was announced and literally just after buying and securing it, the M2 was announced and then that shot it up. And now, of course, the light rail and all the other infrastructure – the price, we're sitting on, I think it's about a recent valuation, and correct me if I'm wrong, but recent valuation was just on the 900 for the area. So That's pretty what's from the numbers, yeah, What's the numbers, James? Yeah, so I've got the data up here on smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. So for Borkham Hills here, median house price is 1070000 We've seen a median quarterly growth there of 1.42%. We've seen a median 12-month growth of negative 8.55%. Mm. Over three years is flat, sitting on 0% growth. But over five years, it's seen a 27.38% growth with a gross rental yield of 2.82% and a 10-year average annual growth of 7.84%. Okay. So that was the 10-year was 7.84? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. average annual growth Beautiful. over 10 years. Yeah. Considering yeah. that it's dropped, it's, it's went for a period from sort of the last sort of three to two years where <sighs> it sort of would have sunk. You, know, you would have seen probably- That hurt. Like It, it, was, it was one of those things even then was, okay- it's time to sell. It's getting to the long end and repairs, maintenance, getting higher on it. And um, looking at that end of 17, beginning of 18, it was like market was really rich, really good then. And then just watch it go, I think it was 9% in 18 and then another 8 or 9% in the last 12 months that, it's, yeah. it, that it lost. I think a lot of people saw that in Borkham Hills. Well, that sort of hills area, sort of out towards Quakers Hill, Castle Hill, sort of out through back through Kellyville there, which is mm. a real pocket of – it has been a pocket of growth. It come down a lot, but I think you're going to start seeing a lifting. Why did you originally buy that Borkham Hills as an investment? Yeah, what was the – do you remember – that's sort of 20, 30 years <laughs> ago now. You, you really yeah. want to know that yeah, this, yeah. this is a really clever investment strategy. Yeah. At the accountant's office, the accountant said, Duncan, Chris, you're earning too much money. You need to go and buy a property. It's Negative going to cost you money. Negative yeah. And we were literally driving home from the office and we saw the for sale sign and literally drove in. It was open home that morning. I drove in, looked at it and went – that's really nice, and bought it. That was our strategy. <laughs> so, look, yeah, sometimes you have for dumb luck. For tax purposes. Yeah, for tax luck. purposes, yeah. dumb luck. You know, and looking back at it, it was a really good investment, but that's time, and that's property does, is yeah. very forgiving over time. Did we buy it the best time? No. Mm. The prices were actually really high, and we actually paid way too much for it, even sort of 7 10% too much looking back at the numbers. We paid for it, so it wasn't the best investment, mm. It's done well, but it could have done better. Well, time in property can, well, should uh, heal all wounds. Mm. There's a lot of people who don't. If you buy 
at the wrong place in the wrong time, uh, a lot of people do get burned. But it goes to show the benefits of being in a market for you must. Well, it's probably three different property cycles you've gone through. Oh, totally. Thing. Maybe yes. even four property cycles. Is there any debt on the property? No, no. So no, it's completely it's just clear. It's good. Yeah. So it's what's the delivery? There. What's the yield on it? That's giving eight hundred and fifty a week now. It's a four bedroom townhouse, so quite okay. unusual for the area. Yeah. There's only twelve in the block, so a nice small block of townhouse as mm. well. A double garage, and it's nearly uh, twenty-one squares, so it's actually okay. a big townhouse for its age and and its style. And um, it's just been getting a really good rental return all that time. That's great money, you know. Eight mm. fifty in your back pocket every yeah. day with no debt on it. No. Like every week, it's um, you know, it's where you want to be if your property portfolio over time in terms of creating value in it. But I'm really quite keen, Duncan, to understand what's sort of twenty twenty looking like for you. But before we have a chat about that. We'll just go to a quick break back in a moment. At Passionate Property Investors, we hear from a lot of infinite learners who love to know more and share more about their property knowledge and investment journey. If this sounds like you and you want to get more education where your eyeballs are, then join us on Facebook at Passionate Property Investors. Videos, eBooks, and learning pathways to get your property cup filled up. Not to mention free education with a tribe who gets it. Join today by searching Passionate Property Investors on Facebook. Welcome back, everyone, here with uh, investor Duncan Yeld chatting through his portfolio. He's, he's sort of, it's like up and down like a yo-yo, really, 5 to 25 to 7 to back up and then down and sitting at 5 right now. What, what's the game plan for 2020, Duncan? What, what are you up to, mate? Game plan, um, looking at... Downsizing, so out of Hornsby into something nice and simple. So just selling your principal place. Selling residence. principal place for residence, okay. get out of there and just take it a little easier. Mm. Um, I think that's the main point there. One, that's personally and from an investment point of view, take some of that cash that comes out of that and put it into a – I still really like the north side of Brisbane, that okay. sort of 15K radius out. I think there's some – good rental yields there and I think we're going to see some good steady growth out of that area as well. So just as a nice blue chip buy and hold, just replace that. Rent in Sydney, not not actually buy again in Sydney, just rent in Sydney. I don't need don't need the asset there now and I mm. want that flexibility over the next few years. Now my son's finished school to be able to um to move around, not just be stuck in Sydney anymore. So And that's sort of I guess comes with maturity experience and property where you just go, yeah, I don't actually need a big principal place of residence anymore. My money can work better for me elsewhere doing what it should be doing and it gives you flexibility to do what you need to do without exactly, sort yeah. of a, a large mortgage hanging over your head that you've got to meet uh, every single month. So you're going to park your money up in Brizzy then? Is yep. that the idea? Yep. Okay. And for, for what sort of length of time? Is this a, a buy and hold for for however long or is it going to oh, be sort of you're going to transact up there? No, I'll sit on that for at least 10 years. Okay. I think yeah, to realistically see the benefit out of any property now you've got to buy in my world. Mm. I, I believe you've got to buy and hold for that sort of 10 years, especially something new to allow the market to mature and allow it to just to sit yeah. and get the best out of it. There's obviously still depreciation or still the bits and pieces out of it, mm. but it's not why you buy. You're buying it for an asset that's going to grow in value. And I'd like to see that not quite doubling in, in that 10 years, but on, on its way to getting some good equity growth out of that in the next 10 years. And uh, buy that in the super fund instead. Okay. That's the other thing. So um, obviously I'll be getting a little bit closer to that uh, magical retirement age at some point in time and uh, obviously there's some massive benefits out of buying investing super in super. Well. Yeah. yeah, we touched it. We, we, we speak a lot about it on uh, smartpropertyinvestment.com. Mm. You could probably do more of it to be fair. But um, So the, the other properties that you have, not counting your principal place of residence, are they sitting in super or outside of super? Yeah, outside of super. Okay. Yeah. So that look, and I'm a big believer though, from a strategy point of view that you know five is enough properties and when you get to that point of – slowing down, settling down, and just having more of a lifestyle rather than working mm. for the mortgage of selling down some of those. So I'd like to see over the next more the five to 10 year mark of selling down those other assets, not all of them, just keep a couple for the cash. Yeah. Um, Balkan Hill's a good example, and just sell down just to pay off any debt, and then you've got some nice money sitting in super. So investing up in, in Queensland, just one property, is that what you think? Just the one for just now. Just one? Yeah, okay. just for now. And what, oh, are you, what, what are you looking at? What sort of like a freestanding house? No, uh, I'm, I'm still a townhouse boy. I, okay. I, I think we've had enough press and discussion about um, units and apartments mm. at this point in time. We don't need to go there. And look, I'm not a big favour of house and land. House and land has its place, depending on where your strategy and where you are with your portfolio. I just like the simplicity of townhomes, especially if they're nice boutique little blocks of that 15, maybe up to 30 townhouse. It's a nice, easy block. Generally, you get an on-site manager or one manager taking care of the whole lot. So um, 
Queensland's a good market for them. Yeah. Any particular suburb you're targeting? Still, no, nothing. No. Uh, Bridgman Downs. Okay. I like the area of Bridgman Downs, but that's sort of that 10 to 15K radius north of Brisbane. North of Brizzy. Uh, not right to Moreton Bay, not that far, so still coming in. You've still got a lot of infrastructure and from a road and rail network and uh, bus network at the moment, Brisbane's got it sorted. People mm. can get in and out of the city really quickly with the network they've actually built there. Well, everyone's still talking about the um, – and it might come online this year. I don't really know um, that Sunshine Coast University up through um, – Petrie and stuff. Yeah, doing a lot of work and they've yeah. got the other campus down on Moreton Bay. There's mm. another whole campus there that's meant to be up to, I think they're looking at 20,000 students through that as well. So there's a lot happening on the north side of Brisbane, which is supporting it. I think yeah. there's too, personally, I think there's too much happening on the south side, the M1 corridor going down towards Gold Coast. They're just new estates and new estates and new estates. And I don't think we're going to get the growth out of that or even the yield where mm. I think north side is still a little bit more tightly held. You mentioned you had a place down in Geelong, so that's a house. House and land house package, and land. yeah. So, I did so did buy you, that. When did, when did you secure that? That was 16 okay. um, and rode the growth through there beautifully. Yeah. But again, that's a buy and hold. That's as a strategy-wise. That'll be – that's 10, if not 15 years for mm. that market to really mature. It's come a long way, Geelong. Uh, you know, the Victorian government was very beneficial in putting a massive amount of infrastructure into – that unlike the Wollongong story, the Newcastle story, when BHP pulled out, yeah. they, they got it right down there. And so from a from a township, from a community, Geelong's actually doing really well. And out towards Armstrong Creek and the Kerr Lewis, where there's a lot of uh, outlying estates that have been mm. built as well. Well, they've got a big advocate down there in um, Richard Miles, who's the, the local member. He loves Geelong. Right. Loves yeah. Geelong. He's, he flies the flag wherever he can yeah. uh, for Geelong. And, and to be fair, you know, it's, it's seen a quite a good transition you know, over the last number of years. And there was that period of time when everyone was investing in Geelong, uh, these house and land stuff. So so did you buy the, the house built or did you build? No, house and land package, okay. yeah. So house yeah. and land package, I like that. Um, again, one of my likes, dislikes, it's I'd rather see a, an investor buy a house and land package from the one builder who's got mm. the land already. It's going to be turnkey. It's going to be complete. You go and buy a block of land by yourself and put the house on it. Nothing wrong with that strategy. It's just you've got to be set up to do that strategy and you've got to know the ins and outs and the nuances of getting that house complete, getting the driveways done, the landscaping done, getting everything connected to get your tenant in there as soon as possible. Where if you've got someone doing a house and land package for you, it's easier, easier. So any defects and stuff is already sorted out before exactly. you move in, everything exactly. should work. So what did, what did you pay for the, the whole, the whole kit to boodle? Um, we paid four ten. Okay. for a four-bed Two and a half bath, two car on four fifty meters of land. Okay, so it's just a big house on it. Yeah, big one story house. Yeah, yeah. Well, flat story. So nice and spread out. Mm. Living areas mostly. The back bedroom is all down one side. It actually is almost a mirror image of the block next door. Okay, so nothing architecturally designed or anything like that. Just it's a, a, just a house. Just a house. Just that's a house. A, and in a good spot. You know, it was uh, you had the park across the road, so a corner and a park across the road. So mm. we're not going to get built on. You've got that open space across the road, especially for the families moving into the area. Yeah. And shopping centre, just, just around the corner. Uh, maybe 150. That's handy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what, sort of, what sort of yield are you getting on it? Sort of rent each, each week? That's still only getting 430 a week. Okay. And what sort of valuation would you get on it now, do you think? <sighs> Look, continuing to sell down there. Like I haven't sold anything down there or mm. had anyone buy anything down there for a while. But you're getting way close to that 500 mark okay. uh, for new house and land. Mm. And even the blocks are starting to get smaller down to that, the 400. I think the one I saw was 395 metres. Like it was crazy small. So we still got a bit of land around. It's not much in comparison to a quarter acre on the north side here yeah. in Sydney. But um, yeah, they're coming up around that 500 mark instead now. Okay. And when we come back, we'll have a chat about how Duncan manages his portfolio back in a moment. If you're a regular listener to the Smart Property Investment Show, then odds are you're already a property fanatic who loves hearing stories on investing from real people, the good, the bad and the ugly. Be with people just like you and join the group Passionate Property Investors on Facebook now. Become part of a community who know what to do and when to do it. And the time to do it is now. Passionate Property Investors. Tribe, tools and tips. Find us on Facebook today. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you're enjoying our chat, my discussion with uh, Duncan Yelds uh, around his portfolio. And it sounds like there is stuff happening and you're not sort of rapid growth. It sounds it's a lot more... Uh, Steady as she goes type strategy over this period of time for you. Yeah, consolidation. Consolidation. It's, it's, it's not not a need to you know neither five twenty five and you know I look at people and investors that are on that journey of five 
mm. plus 9, 10, 11, 12, and they're buying and it's a really exciting part of, of your lifestyle and, and that journey in investing in property and you learn lots and you also get to that point where you go, yeah, I've learned it all now. Mm. I don't need to do that now and it's doing what it's meant to be doing and, yeah, it's now about So it's not a strategy. Is it about at a point in time not working for you and putting your feet up and relaxing a little bit or is it about concentrating your efforts and energies elsewhere other than just – buying property and building wealth well, that way? Good question. Look, my dad passed away at 93 years of age. and uh, he, <laughs> Yeah, and, and he was still going at 87, mm. still working. He'd still get up each morning, suit and tie on, and go out to the office and work. And I'd like to think in one way, shape or form that I'm, I'm still fit enough, not necessarily to work like he was working. He, he mm. enjoyed what he did. What's, what did he do? What's the work? He was an engineer and okay. he actually worked for um, – did a lot of insurance assessing on very large corporate sites okay. and uh, industrial sites. So um, they always came to him because he just knew his stuff, which is pretty been cool. Been in the game for a while. Yeah, yeah. he had, a long time. So, you know, for me, I don't think I'll ever stop doing this. I, I love talking to property. I love talking about property with people and helping them learn the nuances of how to get the best out of what they're doing. So I don't think I'll ever stop that. I think, though, that it's just that ability to have choices mm. and that ability to go, you know what? There's an opportunity to go away here or an opportunity to go and uh, I do a lot of work with the uh, Anthony Robbins organisation okay. and the opportunity to be able to go to the States, go to the UK, go to, to Europe, wherever what it is. What sort of stuff do you do with him? I'm one of his trainers. Okay. So uh, when you work through the, the the programs and do all the programs, you end up becoming, you, you do a leadership course mm. and then uh, basically you go back and help support his his programs be run because he's obviously on stage and there's two, 3,000 participants in the room and yeah. they want someone to talk to and so the people come to you. So so how does that work? So you're just there and present so when people ask questions you can, you know, or is it something a bit more structured and formal? A little bit more structured, yes. Yeah. So, look, we were just in uh, Florida in December and there was 5,000 people. Each team there was 45, 50 people on each team and so you have a trainer and a couple of senior leaders, a couple of other crew that help okay. support. So you look so after a team? You look after okay. a team yeah. and then they come to you and you go through this is what's going to happen today, this is what happened today, any questions, recap. And um, when they have, uh, we call them fur balls, when, when something emotional comes up or mm. when something comes up for someone and they don't understand it, they're getting the upset as people do. It's mm. a learning curve and it doesn't matter what industry you're talking about. It's a matter of sitting them down and helping them understand. Mm. Get him to a point where they can actually move forward and not be stuck. What's the number one thing that you think you've learned from from him or his philosophy? You know, to help you sort of shape the way in which what you're going with with what you do and maybe you're probably investing all this sort of stuff. There's always a way. Yeah, there's always a way. Mm. You just got to find it. And if you have you being the team around you to get the answer is of massive importance. Mm. If you think you're going to be successful on your own. It's never going to happen. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about relationships. It doesn't talk about wealth creation in any way, shape or form, business. Having a team around you, having people to support you, that sounding board idea is is very, very powerful. Do most people get that when you think of people that go along? Because I know like, I've never I've never been to any of your stuff. I've obviously seen them on YouTube, but you know, you spend a fair bit of money to go along to it. Most people go in there and, and learn that and changes the way they see the world. Like it's like you should be seeking help or asking for help. And we're talking specifically around property investment here, but mm. it's largely relevant. Is that like a, a real sort of light bulb moment for a lot of people saying, hey, realign or reshape the way you see the world? Oh, massively. Mm. Uh, there's one event, the Wealth Mastery. So there's a business mastery, Wealth Mastery event that he runs. And it's, sorry, we're not trying to do a promo yeah, for no, answering no, him. No. But, um, yeah, you can pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> it, sitting people in a room and, and just really immersing them in that whole this is who you are around money. Mm. Once you learn something, you can't unlearn it. Uh, you can try to forget it and mm. try to ignore it, but once you have that piece of knowledge and it's been explained to you and you understand it, you can't unlearn that. So you've then got a choice of whether you actually act on the information you have or, or ignore it. And the amount of light bulb moments you have with people going, my God, I've never realised to do that with money. I've never realised. Investors, I'm sure other team you have coming in here will talk about clients and their attitude with money and some people just don't want to understand the numbers when it comes down to it. They don't want to read the mortgage contract. They don't care. It's like, yeah, just give me the loan. Mm. I don't need to understand it. No, you need to understand the loan. And until they actually understand the loan, they actually don't understand why they're investing, what they're actually doing and how they're investing. That's problem, right? You know, you know, and one of the biggest issues you see with property investors is the accountability around decision-making, right? Like people Very think different. that you get to outsource that decision-making by using a mortgage broker no. or an accountant or a buyer's agent or whatever it is, you know. And no, that's not the way it no, is, you know. Exactly. Full accountability. And imagine that's akin to what Anthony Robbins sort of probably teaches, right? You know, exactly. accountability to yourself. Um, and and you, you taking on that responsibility mm. and, and – 
education, I, I, I keep harping on education, education and understanding what you're actually doing is that's where the power comes from. And mm. once, you, once you're actually in control, once you actually understand it and you're educated, you're in control mm. and you get the outcomes you deserve as a result of the education you've got. So I was going to chat to you about managing property. We sort of tied on time, but um, you use property managers for all this stuff? Yeah, very definitely, yeah. yeah. Okay. The only one I haven't used property manager on is the granny flat on my, my place at Hornsby. I just uh, was in and out and it was just another tenant that uh, mm. I didn't need to worry. I didn't need them knocking on my door every time I came home sort of thing. So it was like he just that arm's length, yeah. um, just like a property manager. Yeah, yeah. Just you get you get the invoice at the end of the month. You know how much has come in. You know how much has gone out and that's nice and easy. That's all you need. Yeah. It's really good. Well, Duncan, thanks for coming. I really enjoyed the chat and um, uh, let us know how you get on in Brizzy, where you buy and what you buy. And, um, you know, it's always uh, interesting to see how people are advancing their portfolio or changing it, you know, and I think uh, you're in case in point that a, a property portfolio is not a static thing by any yeah, means. It goes definitely. up or down or left and right. But I think the thing to take away from that, if you're tuning into this, is that uh, you need to be hands-on with this sort of stuff. It's not a set-and-forget thing, no. investing in property. So the better that you can manage, manoeuvre and massage your portfolio, the better off you do with it. So you need to know where you're going with it and how you're getting there. So, Duncan, thanks for coming in and Phil, sharing what so you're much. up to, mate. Cheers. Have a great week. Have a great year. I will do. Remember to uh, check out smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. If you're not yet subscribing to our morning newsletter, say the first to know what's happening in property right across Australia at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au forward slash subscribe. And if you're interested in some of that data that James spoke about really quickly, we've pretty much got every suburb in Australia there. Just click on the uh, data tab and you can just put in by postcode or suburb and you work out what's going on. Please keep those reviews coming on iTunes. We do appreciate them. The team here gets a real kick out of it knowing that we are making a difference to people investing in property. We'll be back again next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.